Hello everyone, let's make a very simple processor. So recently I have read this book called Digital Computer Electronics. In this book the author shows how a simple CPU is made. Um, the CPU is very basic, it supports very basic instructions, uh, but nevertheless it uh, kind of shows how CPUs are made. Um, the architecture of that CPU looks like uh, this. We have those a bunch of different components that either read or write to one another in a particular order to achieve something useful or something uh, interesting. Actually on YouTube I saw uh, Ben Eater building the same processor but on breadboard. He follows the same architecture, so I also decided to make one myself. But instead of uh, building it on a breadboard, it's very hard. I don't know how Mr. Ben managed to do it, but props to him. It's very hard to do it on breadboard, but I want to do it myself. So instead, I will do it on a simulating software called uh, Logism. It's free, it's available for the major operating systems. Uh, it depends on Java runtime, so you must have Java installed on your computer. And with that being said, let's actually start uh, building our own. Um, so uh, I am planning to make all these components one by one, and later on we will, uh, we will assemble them together to make the actual uh, CPU. So to start with, uh, let me first begin with the clock. Uh, the clock is a very important part of the processor. We don't see it here, but if we see closely, most of these uh, circuits have a clock in. Uh, it's synchronized, one clock for all the parts. Uh, so it's very important and let's start uh, building it. So in Logism it's very easy to implement a clock. Actually let's add the circuit by hitting this plus button. And uh, a clock can be implemented very easily by using this uh, button as input. And for output we can use this button. Let's connect them together and we can see now the value of the input is being reflected on the output pin. So basically by toggling this input we can have the, the effect of having a turning on or turning off of a clock. To actually toggle this we can hit this button and now we can click it and toggle it from on and off. So we have a clock. To access our clock circuit from different circuit, for example from main, let's go to main, we can simply click, one click on the on the clock circuit and we can have it here. Um, we can see two inputs, one is this input, the other is this input. Now we, do, we don't know which one is which, uh, we cannot be sure. So let's add some labels that will help us to see what the pins are when we access our circuit from another circuit. So let's go back to clock by double clicking on it and let's add some label to it. Let's call it clock in and for this output pin let's call it clock out. So now if I go to the main circuit and hover over the pins, I can see clock in and clock out. Now let's simulate it. One output, one input pin here. To toggle the input we need to hit here. And we have our clock working. 
sometimes we do want our clock to run uh, automatically without uh, using an input button and to do that we can replace our input by uh, a clock we can go to under wire section we can see the clock input and we can connect it like this now this is almost similar to the input pin however uh, it does have more features now we can simply turn it on off on off by just clicking however if we want to uh, turn it automatic we can go to simulate and then we hit ticks enabled now it's automatically uh, turning on and off which is exactly what we want to change the frequency we can go to tick frequency and select one of those available let's let's make it a little bit faster 8 hertz now it's toggling a lot faster okay let's stop it uh, now our clock circuit is almost uh, completed but I want to add some more features uh, I want to have another output which is the exact opposite of our current output this will become very useful when we reach to build the control logic later on and I also want to add another input uh, which we will call it halt and this halt is going to be used to stop the clock when we want to uh, stop our processor basically by stopping the clock the entire processor is going to be stopped so we need another pin so that such that whenever that pin is on on <coughs> on excuse me the out the input is not going to be reflected on the output the output will always stay zero um, what I'm saying is we need to add we need to add two two connections one at the input and one at the output the input is going to be halt if halt is one the clock should always be zero and the opposite of clock should always be one and if halt is zero then whatever the clock in should be transferred to clock out so the truth table is going to look like this uh, we have two inputs clock in and halt let's also write only one of the outputs the other output is just the opposite we will just put not not gate on this clock and we will get that let's see all the possibilities zero zero in this case since clock is zero the clock output should be zero as well when clock in is zero and halt is one the output is always supposed to be zero if halt is one so let's put this zero when clock is one halt is zero in this case the output clock should be exact the same as the clock in which is one and finally when the input clock is one and halt is one the clock is supposed to stop because halt is one regardless of what clock in is the output should uh, always be zero now we need to find the boolean expression for a clock to build the circuit um, you need to know a little bit about digital logic designs this is actually very simple to find the, the boolean expression for a clock we need to focus on the rows that are ones at the output now this is the only row so let's take that one and clock out should be clock in ended with the opposite of halt like so uh, now this is the representation of the output depending on the inputs let's go and build it on logism so let's go to the clock module or clock circuit we need to add another input pin that one is going to be halt and another output this is going to be the exact of clock out
okay, let's rename it as just clock instead of clock out. Now we need an end gate that takes two inputs. We can find this end gate under the gates section. End gate. We can place it here. Now by default it has five inputs, but we just need two of them. So let's put two. And yeah, we have our end gate. Um, this is the output and we can also have the opposite of the output by putting a not get okay I forgot not get here uh, if we see our boolean expression the halt must be negated before it is fed to the end gate So this is our clock circuit, it's completed. Now we can go and test it from the main circuit or generally speaking from other circuits. Now we can actually see there are two more additional pins in addition to the previous two. This one is the HALT input. And here we have the opposite of whatever clock is. Not clock, clock, clock in and halt. To start a simulation, we can hit this. Now everything is working as expected. Whatever the input is being reflected here, and this one is always the opposite of this. However, if halt is activated, regardless of what this input is, this clock should always be zero and this should always be one. To enable automatic uh, simulation, we can go to simulate and tick enabled. Now it's turning on and off, but since halt signal is activated, it doesn't have any effects on our output. If we turn it off, then we can see the clock is changing. Let's stop it. Um, so that's it. The clock is the clock circuit is completed. Well, not really. Uh, let's actually add some labels here and We can make our chip a little bit bigger to do that. We need to go to the clock Come on, okay, and we have to edit the circuit appearance in order to do that we have to go to This button here we can go to actually I don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, okay, but it is here. Uh, these are our two input pins and we have two output. To redraw the circuit, we can go and click one of those shapes. Let's just select a rectangular shape. This should be enough. Now, in order to know which input belongs to which input we have to click it first and if you see on the top I mean on the right bottom corner something is being highlighted this is the input pin the clock in let's bring it here and let's bring a label called clock in the second input pin the only second input pin is the halt signal Let's also write HALT here. Let's also bring our outputs. If we see on the, on the right down corner, this is the opposite of the clock. So let's bring it here. Put some text. Okay. 
clock bar and finally we have this thing I am not sure what it is but let's put it here this is the output clock out or just simply clock And finally, the orientation pin. It's, it's useless, but let's put it here. Now we can delete the original appearance. This is the new appearance of uh, the clock circuit. We can change the border to 2 so that it's a little bit thick. And yeah, the circuit is completed. Now let's test it. Let's go to main circuit. Okay, now everything is kind of messed up because. Uh, it, the new circuit is bigger than what it was before. Let's delete this. Let's move these things to the right, including this. Okay, let's test it. Halt is one. Nothing should change as expected. But when halt is zero, whatever the value of clock in should appear on clock. Yeah, it seems like it's working properly. So with this being said, we have completed our clock circuit. Um, the next one is going to be the program counter. If I can go to the architecture of the SAP computer, we will build the program counter in the next video. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions or if I make any mistakes. And thanks for watching.